Your neighborhood Chevron gas station invites you to... Let George Do It. Brought to you by the makers of climate-tailored Chevron Supreme Gasoline and RPM Compounded Motor Oil. When George Valentine got out of the Army, he had an idea and just enough money to set up a small office and put an ad in the paper offering his services as a dog walker, a crime solver, a wife spanker, or whatever a client wants done. So far, he's met with fair success. He's had plenty of clients, but not all of them paid off. That hasn't discouraged George. He's an optimist. Right now, he's striding up to the side door of his office, the door that lets him into his private office without going through his waiting room. Ah, good morning, Sonny. Sonny? Claire? Hey, where is everybody? Oh, good morning, Mr. Valentine. We were in the waiting room. We've been kind of busy. I've been taking him up and down the elevator. He never rode in one before. And now Claire's pointing out the tall building. Hey, look, to look. Wait a minute, Sonny. Slow down, will you? What are you talking about? Your new client. Oh, have I got a new client? Yes, sir. And this is his first visit to the city. Oh, great. Where's he from? Three Oaks. Three Oaks. Three Oaks. Say, that sounds familiar. Oh, I bet you'll like him, Mr. Valentine. He's very nice. Three Oaks. Oh, I know. My mother had some cousins living in Three Oaks. His name is Jeff Williams. Jeff Williams. Cousin Jeff. Hey, is he your cousin? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Haven't seen him in 25 years. He's probably married and has a dozen kids. Is he really your cousin, Mr. Valentine? Why, he isn't a bit like you. He, he's very nice. Oh. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Sonny. All right, carry on with the office work. I'll see you about Cousin Jeff. Yes, sir. Oh, good morning, Mr. Valentine. Good morning, Claire. Well, Cousin Jeff. Hello, Cousin George. <laughs> Say, it's been a long time, Jeff. How are you? I never felt better in my life, George. Your cousin was telling me that this is his first visit to the city, Mr. Valentine. Oh, is that so? Sit down, Jeff. Oh, after you, ma'am. Oh, thank you, Mr. Williams. You're welcome, ma'am. Well, I guess you're surprised to see me, George. I've been looking forward to this trip for a long time, but that farm sort of kept me tied down. But, Jeff, how'd you know where to find me? Am I, uh... Famous, even in Three Oaks? Oh, I saw your advertisement, George. I have the newspapers mailed to me. Rural Route 4. Oh, I see. Well, uh, what's on your mind, Jeff? Well, it's like this. I, I had a little extra egg money put aside. Egg money? Mr. Williams has chickens. He sells the eggs. Oh. Oh, my chickens are sure good to me this year. I figure after I pay my hotel bill, I'll have about $100 for you, George. Oh, what do you mean? Why give me $100? Well, <laughs> Like this, George, I like my farm, you know. I was born and raised there, but it's pretty lonesome, especially winter. Oh, I'm way ahead of you, Jeff. You want me to find you a wife? Oh, I figure I'm doing my own courting. Only trouble, I can't find a girl to court. Really, Mr. Williams? <laughs> well, you see, ma'am, most of the women in Three Oaks is already married, and those that aren't are spoken for. Oh, I find the girl and you court her. Well, that's fair enough. But I, I got to meet her by Wednesday night. Got to get back home. Have to start my corn husking. Uh, did you have any special type in mind? Well, hope you'll forgive me, Miss Brooks, but I, I like a pretty girl <laughs> like Miss Brooks. Claire? <laughs> Claire, what are you doing next Wednesday? I quit. <laughs> hmm? Well, don't worry, Jeff. I'm sure I can help you. Well, there's only one other thing, George. She's got to be a girl who'll love my little Dolores. Dolores. And all her brothers and sisters. All her brothers and sisters? How many have you got? Fifty-seven. Fifty-seven children? No, fifty-seven pigs. Pigs? Pigs. He raises pigs, Mr. Valentine. Uh, I hope you won't think I'm loony, but those pigs mean a lot to me. I'm fond of them, and they're fond of me. <laughs> okay, Jeff. Just leave everything to me. I'll find a girl for you, all right? Someone who'll love Dolores and all her brothers and sisters. All fifty-seven of them. I don't want to bother you with questions, Mr. Valentine, but what are we doing here? Working for our new client. I promised I'd find him a girl, didn't I? Do you expect to find her in this alley? Well, this alley leads to the stage door entrance. Stage door? A showgirl? Sure, why not? She's got to be pretty. And I'll bet these girls are sick of the bright lights. They'd probably give their eye teeth to settle down on a farm. What are you going to do? Tap them on the shoulder and say, pardon me, but do you like pigs? <laughs> no, of course not. I'm going to be subtle about this. 
I'll tell him I'm an inquiring reporter. You get it clear? No, but it doesn't matter. Oh, it's 540. The matinee's over a half hour ago. Hey, here they come now. Say, there's a beauty. Yeah, she'll do. Oh, miss. Miss. Oh, oh, wait a minute, please. If it's a date, my mother don't let me go out on no date. Besides, I'm booked solid for two months. Oh, no, no. I'm the inquiring reporter. I just want to ask you a question. Would you mind telling me, what's your favorite animal? My favorite animal? Mink. Mink? Yeah, mink. My mother likes ermine. Oh, I see. Well, thanks a lot. Maybe you could get Mr. Williams to raise mink instead of pig. Oh, no, I'll try a brunette this time. Oh, a miss. Miss. All right. Give me a pencil and I'll give you my autograph. Oh, no, thanks. That's not it. You see, I'm the inquiring reporter, and I'd like to ask you a question if you have a minute. Shoot. What's your favorite animal? Male. Male? Male. Oh, I see. Well, thanks a lot. Is that all? Yes, miss, thanks. That's plenty. If you'd like an interview for your paper and pictures, I'm uh, at the Brayton Hotel. I see. Well, I'll give you a buzz. And if a man's voice answers, don't hang up. That's me. <laughs> I'm at the Brayton Hotel. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> it seemed like a good idea at the time. Oh, Mr. Valentine, look at this. Coming towards us. The baby doll type. Uh-huh. Oh, uh, miss, miss. You mean little old me? Yeah, that's right. Little old you. <laughs> they call me Kathy Phillips. What do they call you? Well, they call me the inquiring reporter, and I'd like to ask you a question, if you don't mind. Oh, I think that's just darling of you. What do you want to know? Well, I, I wish you'd tell me, what's your favorite animal? My favorite animal? That's right. <laughs> promise not to laugh. I promise. Cross your heart, hope to die? <laughs> hope to die. Well, then, don't you dare tell a soul, but I'm just mad about piggies. Oh, well, that's a nice thing. Piggies? Claire! Claire, we found her. I don't mean to rush you, Cousin George. That's not why I phoned. I'm just a little anxious, that's all. Now, will you be patient, Jeff? I think I found the right girl for you. She's small, she's pretty, she's blonde. But does she like pigs? Does she like pigs? The girl's mad about pigs. She sounds like the one I've been looking for, all right. When can I meet her, Cousin George? Why, she's in my office right now. I'll arrange a date for you tonight. You can take her out to dinner. Dinner? Say, maybe I better get my hair cut. <laughs> yeah, you do that, Jeff, and I'll call you later. Goodbye. Bye. Sonny, Sonny. Yes, sir? Uh, send Kathy Phillips in here, will you? I want to talk to her. Okay, Mr. Valentine. Uh, Mr. Valentine wants to see you, miss. You want to see little old me, Mr. Valentine? Yeah, sit down, Kathy. I want to talk to you. Did I win some sort of contest? Is that what this is all about? Ah, never mind. You'll find out soon enough. Kathy, do you like farms? Oh, Mr. Valentine, I adore farms. Of course, I've never been on a farm, but then when you adore something, well, you just adore it, that's all. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. Just so you like pigs. Uh, can you cook? Cook? You mean mix up things in the kitchen? Yeah, well, that's sort of the idea. Oh, I don't think anyone can mix up things in the kitchen like I can. Yeah, I'll bet. <laughs> well, never mind. Just so you like pigs. I brought my collection down for you to see, Mr. Valentine. Collection? What collection? It's in this box. Go ahead, open it. Yeah, well, uh, what is it? Oh, they won't hurt you, silly. Go on, open it. <laughs> All right, I'll buy it. What in the name of heaven are these? I told you, I just adore piggies. Great Caesar's ghost. Piggy Banks. <laughs> Piggy banks. Well, how was I to know? When she said piggies, I thought it was just her baby talk. She's got over a hundred piggy banks, Mr. Valentine. I counted Never them. mind the piggy banks. We got to do something. Good afternoon. Let George do it. Hello, Miss Brooks. How are you? Oh, fine, Jeff. Just a minute. Your cousin. Oh, I got to stall him. Hello, Jeff. I phoned to ask you about my date tonight, cousin George. Oh, well, now look, Jeff, you'll have to be patient. She can't make it tonight. Oh, shucks. I had my hair cut. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jeff, it'll keep. She'll have dinner with you tomorrow night. Now, this girl is worth waiting for. I don't want to rush her, but I have to get back to start my corn husking. Yeah, you'll make it. Now, don't worry. Goodbye, Jeff. Yeah, goodbye. Mr. Valentine, I don't like this. Jeff is too nice to try to put something over on him. Now, Claire, what are you talking about? Kathy's a wonderful girl. Yeah, but, Mr. Valentine, she won't know any more about pigs tomorrow night than she does right now. Oh, yes, she will. Because you two are to go down to the library and pick up all the books they have on pigs. Then what do we do with them? You see to it that Kathy reads them. What makes you think she can read? Then you read them to her. Take her to your apartment. Spend all day and all night if you have to. But I want that girl to know everything there is to know about pigs. You understand? Now get going. 
Chandler Bookshop. Hello, this is Sonny Brooks. Is it too late to send out some books to us right away? Why, no, I don't believe so. We went through all they had in the library, but she still doesn't know anything about pigs. Uh, pigs? Yeah. Send us everything you've got. Send it to apartment 5306 Sharp Street. Oh, what street? Spell that, please. Sharp. S is in swine, H is in hogs, A is in animal, R is in ribs, and P is in pig's feet. <laughs> that waitress? Why doesn't she take our order? All that talk about pigs made me hungry. Oh, never mind, Sonny. She'll get around to us soon. Now, come on, Kathy. Name the different kinds of pigs. Oh, Claire, I'm such a tired little old thing. Now, Kathy, Mr. Valentine has big plans for you, but you've got to know your pigs. Well, let me see. There's the Yorkshire pig. They've got the darlingest little spots all over them. Hey, that's not right, is it, Claire? Kathy, Yorkshire are white. You mean the spotted pole in China. Its head is rugged, medium in length, and slightly dished in the profile. Oh, Claire, you use such big words. I guess I'm just a little old dummy. I wasn't very smart in school. I never will forget the trouble I had in fifth grade. You mean you got to the fifth grade? Sonny. <laughs> if you could only talk to someone who really knows pig. Well, what'll it be, folks? Can I take your order? You order for us, Sonny. Well, we might as well stay in the spirit. We better have the best pork chops from great big pigs. Oh, the best pork chops come from the medium type, like the Berkshire and the Hampshire. Hey, Claire, listen to our waitress. Oh, I was raised on a farm. Well, what will it be, folks? Never mind the food. Just tell this girl everything you know about pigs. Yeah, and please, use words of only one syllable. <laughs> Come on, open up, open up. Say, where is everybody? Oh, it's you. Oh, good morning, Claire. Come in. Did I wake you? Wake me? I haven't been to bed yet. Well, you can sleep tonight. Say, how's our pupil getting along? I don't know about Kathy, but whenever I close my eyes, I see pigs. Yorkshire, Berkshire, Hampshire, Dura. Hey, you know your pigs, all right. Oh, Mr. Valentine. Oh, good morning, Sonny. Where's Kathy? She's still learning her lines. Her lines? What are you talking about? Well, we finally hit on a system that works with her. We pretend she's playing a part in a show. Yeah, we write the lines and she learns them. I'll show you. Kathy? Oh, Kathy. I'm coming. Oh, Mr. Valentine, it's you. Yep, little old me. <laughs> Go ahead, Kathy. Recite for him. All right. <clears throat> the pole in China has a head that is rugged in appearance, medium in length, and slightly dished in the profile. Well, that's wonderful, marvelous, tremendous. Jeff will be the happiest man in Three Oaks. Jeff? Who's Jeff? Oh, uh... Sit down, Kathy. The time has come for us to have a little talk. Oh, I just adore that, Mr. Valentine. Kathy, how would you like to settle down on a little farm? A farm? With 57 pigs. I think that'd be just darling. Could I name them? Oh, oh sure, sure, of course. Now, look, Kathy, I'm not promising you anything, understand? But you'll have dinner with him tonight. Dinner? Oh, I am fond of eating. Yeah, I'll bet. Now, you meet him, he meets you. The rest is up to you, too. Oh, what do you mean, Mr. Valentine? Uh, well, I mean, if he likes you and you like him, then you make your own plan. I'm just sort of bringing you together, that's all. Arranging a date for tonight. Uh, about that date, Mr. Valentine, I'm afraid I won't be able to keep it. You won't? Why not? I hate to disappoint you, Mr. Valentine. Why? What's wrong? Well, I'm afraid he might not like it. Who might not like it? My husband. Your husband? You've got a husband? Well, of course. Didn't I tell you? He's just the sweetest little old thing. He collects piggy banks, too. Well, yeah, George certainly finds himself in an embarrassing situation now. While he's figuring out an answer, I'd like to have a little talk with you. You know, most folks are alike... We all enjoy doing business with the neighborhood grocer, the druggist, or the hardware man who gives us a friendly smile when we come in. Kind of a chap who asks about the kids when he wraps up our package. That's one reason why many folks like to trade at home-owned Chevron gas stations. They're run by local men who've made good, friendly, capable fellows who know most everyone in town and know their cars equally well. They're all mighty nice people to do business with. That's why you always feel at home when you stop at a Chevron gas station. There's another thing you can count on finding at Chevron gas stations. 
They all carry that climate-tailored Chevron Supreme gasoline and RPM compounded motor oil. All of them honor your Chevron credit card, too. So whenever you're on a trip, make it a habit to stop at Chevron Gas Station. George found a girl for his client, all right. Kathy was small, pretty, and blonde, and she learned all about pigs. There was only one catch. Kathy was already married. Now George, Claire, and Sonny are still in Claire's apartment. Why didn't you ask her if she was married? Well, I didn't think about it. The most important thing of all, and you didn't think about it. Well, it just didn't occur to me. I did mention settling down on a farm. But you didn't mention the farmer. Oh, I forgot. It slipped my mind. Oh, fine. Wonderful. And after all we went through teaching her about pigs. Yeah. Well, I can't even bear to look at bacon. And when I sleep, I don't snore anymore. I just go, oink, oink, oink. Oh, Sonny, will you get out of here? <laughs> now, Claire, what are we going to do? Jeff is supposed to phone me here, and I'm supposed to have the date all set. What will I tell him now? That's your problem, Mr. Valentine. I wash my hands of the whole thing. Oh, now, Claire, don't say that. Jeff's been looking forward to this trip for years. If I can't get him a bride, well, at least I can get him a dinner date. Besides, there's the hundred dollars. Claire. You don't think I'd accept money from my own cousin? You make me sound like a heel. Well? That must be Jeff. You talk to him. Oh, no. Talk to him yourself. Take your medicine like a man. Oh, a fine secretary I've got. Hello? Hello, this is Jeff. Oh, hello, Jeff. I got another haircut, Cousin George. <laughs> another haircut. That's great. Now, what about my date for tonight? You know, I've got to get back to the farm tomorrow. Well, you see, it's like this, Jeff. Uh, you see, this girl knows her pigs all right. Fine, that'll give us something to talk about. You know, she knows all about pigs. And you see, well, this girl is very pretty. I'm anxious to meet her. And, and you see, this girl is... Married. Will you stop it? Stop what? No, not you. You see, Jeff, it's like this. I... Uh... Oh, wait a minute. What's the matter? What's the matter? Why can't you have dinner with him? Me? Oh, no, you don't. What'd you say, Cousin George? Well, you're beautiful. I am. <laughs> and, and you know about pigs? Well, I ought to. I was raised with them. Well, how about it? You'd hand me over for a measly hundred dollars. Oh, now, don't get dramatic. It's just a dinner date. Well, it's more than just a dinner date. It's more than just a dinner date, and you know it. Now, look, it's his first trip to the city, and he's my cousin. How can I let him down? Let who down? You know he likes you. Remember, he said he wanted to meet a girl just like you. Like who? You'd sell your own grandmother for a hundred dollars. Whose grandmother? Oh, Grandma's fine, thank you, George. <laughs> oh, now, listen, Claire. All you have to do is have dinner with him. Is that too much to ask of you? All right, I'll do it. You will have dinner with him? With who? I'll have a lot of dinners with him. I always wanted to live on a farm. Claire. Tell your cousin to get a haircut and meet me at Pierre's. <laughs> Sure is nice of you to have dinner with me, Claire. It's nice of you to think it's nice of me. <laughs> I won't try to figure that out. No. Mm, I like it. You like what? Your hair cut. Yeah, I had it cut twice. <laughs> Say, maybe we ought to eat something. Yeah, sounds like a good idea. Well, let's see what's on this bill affair. Oh. What's the matter? They don't spell very good. Huh? Oh, it's in French. <laughs> You know, that's one thing I didn't learn on the farm. Never mind, Jeff. I don't like this place anyway. It's much too expensive. Oh, that's all right. You're forgetting about my egg money. Now, look. Those chickens didn't go to all that trouble just so you could throw your money away on me. Come on. Oh, where'll we go? There's a restaurant in my neighborhood that has good food. And it's cheap, too. See? You're saving my money for me already. How'll I ever be able to thank Cousin George? You won't have to thank him. Just give him the hundred dollars. That's all he's interested in. Come on, Jeff. Let's go someplace where they know how to spell. Sonny. Sonny. Sonny, wake up. Sonny. Yorkshire, Berkshire, Hampshire. Sonny. Poland, China. Sonny. And Durak. Huh? Oh. Claire isn't home yet. I've been sitting here waiting for her to come back. What time is it? Three o'clock. It is? Then why'd you wake me? Let me go back to counting pigs. Oh. <laughs> Sonny, why would a dinner date take so long? Maybe he's a slow eater. 
Donnie, you don't seem to realize how serious this is. She's been gone for eight hours. I've been sitting here watching the clock. Why don't you read some? I don't feel like reading. We got quite a choice of books. There's breeding pigs and pig breeding and pigs and their breeds. Hey, do you suppose she's purposely staying out late just to, just to worry me? Well, she is. She has. Sonny, Jeff liked her. He liked her a lot. Sonny, did she like him? Oh, my sister goes for the shy type. Oh. Would you call me shy? Well, Don't answer that. You know, Sonny, I like her. So do I. Sonny, I think I love her. I think I do, too. And I threw her at him. I forced her to go out with him. I'm a fool. I'm a sap. I'm a... A fathead. A fathead. Thanks a lot, son. You're welcome, Mr. Valentine. That's the telephone. I'll get it. Hello? Hello? Claire, where are you? What are you doing at my place, Mr. Valentine? Well, I was waiting for you to get back. Oh, you don't mean you were worried. Worried? Why should I worry? Claire, where are you? It's three o'clock. I thought you weren't worried. Well, it's just that, that... Well, I don't want you showing up late for work tomorrow. I won't be at work tomorrow, George. Claire, you call me George. Well, I'm in a sentimental mood. Hey, Claire, will you please tell me, where are you calling from? From Dr. Hutchison's house. Dr. Hutchison, are you hurt? He's a minister. A minister? Claire! Cousin Jeff said to send you his love. Goodbye, George. <laughs> Are you sure, Mr. Valentine? Sonny, will you get dressed and shut up? Yeah, but where are we going? We're going to annul the marriage. Mr. Valentine. You don't want Jeff for a brother-in-law, do you? And how will I get along without her? What will happen to me? What will happen to me? I don't want to go to Three Oaks and live with pigs. No. <laughs> Here's his address. Dr. Hutchison, 310 G Street. Come on. Yeah, but what will we do there? He can tell us where they went. He can tell how to find her. I'm not giving her up, Sonny. Not without a fight. <laughs> This is a place. Come on. Don't you think it's a little late to be busting in on people? No, he can't help that. I'll do the talking. Don't you think it's a little late to be ringing doorbells? Well, we've got to find her before he takes her to Three Oaks. Can I help you? Oh, uh, I want to speak to Dr. Hutchinson right away. It's very important. Are you sure? I hate to disturb him. He had to get up a little while ago. We had a wedding party here. A wedding party? Sonny, a wedding party. I heard her. Such a lovely young couple. And so much in love. Maybe it was some other couple, Mr. Valentine. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Uh, was the groom tall and, and outdoorish looking? Oh, he was a very wholesome young man. He told me all about his pigs. Oh, pigs. It's the right people, all right. I never saw a happier bride in all my life. And I've seen a lot of brides. Are you sure she was happy? She was all smiles. He was all smiles, Mr. Valentine. Well, maybe it was just an act. Oh, no. At the end of the ceremony, when they kissed, well, I never saw such a kiss in all my life. And I've seen a lot of kisses. Oh. Oh. Um, now then, um, what did you want to see my husband about? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. Come on, Sonny. Goodbye. 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 Mr. Valentine? Mr. Valentine, what time is it? Four o'clock. Don't you think it's a little late for us to be out taking a walk? What else could we do? Sleep? I couldn't sleep. Oh, I guess I couldn't either. Look, there's just the two of us left now, Sonny. We'll have to stick together. Then you're not going to try to stop her? Stop her? How can I stop her? We've got to think about her, Sonny. If she's happy, then, well, we'll just give her up. But, Mr. Valentine... We've got to be men. Well, I'll try. Come on, let's go in this restaurant and have some breakfast. We haven't had dinner yet. All right, then we'll have dinner. Not that I can eat. I don't think I'll ever be able to eat again. Is this table all right? Oh, what does it matter? I can't eat anyway. Well, then why'd we come in here? Well, I... I just want to sit and look at the food and feel miserable. What'll it be, gentlemen? Scrambled eggs and a nice side order of ham. Ham? Don't even mention... Claire! 
Claire, what are you doing here? Working. Working? Excuse me, they want me in that booth. It's a wedding breakfast. Hey, well, I don't get this. Why should Mr. she... Mr. Valentine, look, in that booth. It's Jeff. Jeff? Oh, of course. It's their wedding breakfast. Well, then why is she working here as a waitress? Oh, well, maybe they haven't got enough money to get back to Three Oaks. Hey, he's coming to our table. You won't start a fight, will you, Mr. Valentine? Fight? I haven't got any fight left in me. Well, I'm sure glad to see you, Cousin George. I told Jeff you were here. Yeah. Well, congratulations, Cousin Jeff. Thanks. Thanks a lot. I... I hope you'll be very happy. And that comes from the heart, Claire. What heart? Well, I... I guess the best man won. Be good to her, Jeff. You bet I will. Oh, uh, Cousin George, about the hundred dollars. Ah, forget it. Why, Mr. Valentine. Oh, no, I don't want to forget it. After all, you kept your part of the bargain. You got me a date, and now look what happened. And about the hundred dollars, Cousin oh, George. Buy yourself a wedding present, Jeff. A, a pig or something. A pig? Well, thanks a lot. Now I better get back to Margie. Yeah, you go right ahead and get Margie? Who's Margie? Well, I thought you knew. Margie's my bride. Y your bride? What about Claire? Claire is our bridesmaid. Claire, you mean... You remember Margie, don't you, Sonny? She waited on us when we were here yesterday. Hey, she is the girl who knows all about pigs. She sure does. You know, Margie was born just ten miles from my place, but can you beat it? We never met until Claire brought me here tonight. I knew it would be love at first sight. Oh, well, uh, Claire, look, i, I got to talk to you. Sit down. I can't, Mr. Valentine. I'm working for Margie for the rest of the day. I don't get off duty till 6. Then I'll stay right here and wait for you. Well, I'll say goodbye. Our train leaves in a little while. I want you to know, Cousin George, that I'm the happiest man in the world. Oh, no, you're not. I am. Me too. Now, Jeff, you remember to look us up when you come back to the city. Oh, we won't be coming back. Margie and I decided that we'd stay in Three Oaks for the rest of our lives. Why, Jeff? Just settle down on a little farm and raise pigs. We'll hear George's voice again in just a moment. In most parts of the West, motorists are facing the time of year that's hardest on cars. Cooler weather and rain or snow always bring with them some annoying car troubles. Most of these can pretty well be avoided, however, by a checkup trip to your neighborhood Chevron dealer. He'll put the right grade of RPM compounded motor oil in your car's crankcase, see that its transmission and differential have the right kind of grease for the season, and he'll check your battery and accessories like windshield wiper blades, spark plugs, and lights. You can depend on getting a good job of winter checking at a Chevron gas station. Chevron dealers, you know, are in business for themselves. They've had plenty of car service experience before branching out on their own. So you can count on a competent, conscientious job. See about that winter checkup this weekend. Talk it over with your neighborhood Chevron gas station man. <laughs> Well, next week, a celebrity brings his problem to George, and you'll probably hear something like this. Well, sure, of course I know you. Jimmy Jones, the greatest cowboy star in pictures. That's right. I work in horse operas. Mr. Valentine, you've got to help me. Sure, what's on your mind, Jimmy? What can I do for you? Look, now you mustn't breathe a word of this. It'd ruin my career. You can trust me, Jimmy. What's the matter? Mr. Valentine, I'm afraid of horses. <laughs> Chevron Gas Stations all through the West invite you to be with us again next week for another chapter of Let George Do It, brought to you by the makers of Chevron Supreme Gasoline and RPM Compounded Motor Oil. Let George Do It, starring Robert Bailey as George, with Francis Robinson as Claire and Eddie Firestone Jr. as Sonny, is written by Pauline Hopkins, produced and directed by Owen Vinson. Others in the cast were Frank Martin as Jeff, Jane Webb as Kathy, Rena Craig as Margie, and June Foray as Mrs. Hutchinson. The music was composed and conducted by Charles Dent. Your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>